getting geek, 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 well, 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 look what we have here. What's going on, everybody? Episode 22 of Getting Geeked with Your Boy, Danny Allen. That's me, your host. Yeah, so there's some DC news this week, and some Marvel news, and some horror news, and some other stuff. On today's show, Henry Cavill. Back in the news, Batman, uh, Blumhouse, and James Wan are partnering up. What? Amazon Prime, Sony Spider Verse. What? A Christmas Story. I watched it. All that on today's episode of Getting Geeks. Let's get right into this, man. Henry Cavill. He's back. The the Rock. Brought back Henry Cavill. Well, not necessarily. Apparently, it's not a done deal. Apparently, we may. There's no director. There's no script. Apparently, he hasn't even signed on for anything. It was all in good faith, and all that, and that post-credit scene that was before James Gunn t- took over. Is before he took over. We may not even get. Henry Cavill back. Because we are going... Well, not we. James Gunn and Peter Safran, they are going to pitch their 10-year plan to Warner Brothers Discovery's team in two months. Just to them. So we're not going to know for a while. Right now, they are figuring out, do they want to keep this current Justice League or do they want to wipe the slate clean? I've been saying it for a while. Aquaman 2, you know, Wonder Woman 2, uh, you know, like, they don't have a solid Justice League anymore. We don't know what's going on with Ben. We don't know. We got Michael Keaton, supposedly, at the end of the Flash movie. They didn't change that. Uh, you got Robert Pattinson. I'm kind of getting off topic here because we're talking about Henry Cavill. That was the glue, bro. That was the glue. Bring back Henry Cavill, everybody else will follow. We don't know what's going on. We don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. All I know is, according to the rap, he we don't El Miembe, he says that uh it's not a done deal. We found out a couple weeks ago Henry Cavill hasn't even talked to James Gunn yet. Yeah. Yeah. And Black Adam underperformed at the box office. It's barely cracking $400 million worldwide. It's not good. They're, they're, they're looking to break even, barely. That's saying, that's that's being uh, nice about it. It might have been the biggest opening for The Rock's career. But for a DC movie, it was not, well, the rank of, I think it's like 18th or 17th in the entire DC universe. Like the movies that like... Overperformed, underperformed. The list that so that the list that shows which films made the most money. The Black Adam is not in the top ten, uh, and that was what they were. That's what The Rock was relying on. Oh, we'll bring Henry Cavill in at the end, and then we'll make a bunch of money, and hopefully they bring back Henry. Well, I am one to say this, guys. Either bring back the entire Justice League cast. Or recast them all. Wipe that slate clean. Let's get a new Justice League. It's getting to that point for me. What do you guys think about Henry Cavill maybe not returning as as Superman like we all thought? Comment below. Let's get into this next topic. Batman. David Zaslav. He said, you know, in a couple years, there's not going to be four Batman running around. Four Batman. You, you got Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton, Robert Pattinson, and Ian, Ian Glenn from Titans, Bruce Wayne, homeboy from Game of Thrones. A lot of you guys may not have seen Titans. Some people don't like his interpretation of Bruce Wayne. I don't know why. 
like they've never seen an old Bruce Wayne before, <laughs> Batman Beyond. <laughs> so, I dig Titans. I, I like Titans. I liked Ian Glenn's interpretation of Bruce Wayne in his 60s. You know, like you're not going to get a Batman in his prime for that iteration. So David Zaslav's like, we're not going to have four Batman running around. So what does that mean? Only one? Let's not get carried away here. What I think is going to happen. Robert Pattinson is still going to do his solo universe. But as far as Ben Affleck, Michael Keaton goes, I don't think Michael Keaton's going to stick around long term for the next 10 years. And honestly, I don't think Ben Affleck's going to stick around long term either, either. I would love that. I would love if Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill came back together because that's a dynamic duo. That's what jump started this whole DC extended universe. Now the DC universe. They started it. So if you can't get Henry back and you can't get Ben Affleck back, then just recast. There's rumors that Jason Momoa wants to play Lobo. So just recast everything. New universe. Yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice the Suicide Squad universe and the Peacemaker universe. And you're going to have to sacrifice... Uh, and that's all James Gunn stuff. So, like... That's the only thing that I'm thinking that's going to stop him from rebooting everything. It's because he's already established Peacemaker in the DC Extended Universe. Now, with this Flash movie coming out, it can change things narratively but you're still going to have ties to the Snyderverse because you're going to keep some actors you're going to switch out some actors you know if David Zaslav if we take his word for it he wants a real inclusive DC universe no recasts everybody's on the same page 10 year story they're writing the bible it's, it's just easier to wipe the slate clean Especially if they're not going to bring back Henry and Ben. There's no point in keeping this continuity. You know, Wonder Woman had a good run. Uh, Aquaman had a good run. But if you're not going to get some solid Justice League stories out of these actors, what's the point? Let's get some new get some new blood in there. You have Robert Pattinson's universe. I know Matt Reeves says, well, I don't want aliens in in my universe. Well, too bad, bro. Because it's so, it just so happens that Robert Pattinson's movie, The Batman, was one of the best Batman movies to ever exist. And that's a good stepping stone for Batman. Well, I can't see this version of Batman with Superman. Well, that's what we said about Man of Steel, too. Oh, Batman can't exist in this universe, in Man of Steel's universe. I, I just think that's short-sighted. Uh, Batman and the Batman was only two years in as the Cape Crusader. He can he can be Batman for five to ten years before meeting Superman. That's Superman in the Justice League is like Batman's middle arc, mid to late arc. He's been Batman as far as I'm concerned. I'm going back to the animated series. He was Batman for a good five five years. Before he even had Robin and the Bat family. So five, the first five to ten years of his career is building up his solo status. It's the Bat family. And then after that, going into ten years, that's when you introduce your Justice League, your aliens, your Superman, your Wonder Woman, your Aquaman. You're building up that world. So Pattinson is at that stepping stone, year two. So he can do a whole trilogy. Of solo stuff. And then after that trilogy. You build up a Superman. You throw a Superman end credit scene. At the end of the Batman 3 or something. That's what I would do. Because you're already starting from scratch. With the Batman. With Robert Pattinson. Oh well it's too dark. and No that's excuses dude. Batman is dark. He's brooding. He's a detective. Noir. Aesthetic. All that is there. Superman brings something else to the DC Universe. All these characters can, avert, can exist with their own tones in the same universe. It just baffles me because you guys are apparently comic book readers. You can't imagine these scenarios where a Robert Pattinson's Batman is introduced to Superman. We're not there yet, but we will be. 
that's the cleanest break for me. You can retire, phase out this DC extended universe, then Robert Pattinson is the new universe. New everything. What do you guys think? Who should be Batman? Is it going to be just one Batman? Just Robert Pattinson? Is it going to be Robert Pattinson and Ben Affleck going forward? Is it going to be Robert Pattinson and a new actor? Stepping in for Ben Affleck? I don't think Michael Keaton is going to stick around, man. He got paid like two million bucks for Batgirl. And they're not even putting that out. He's like, that's fine. I got my two mil. So I don't know. I think uh, Michael Keaton's pretty much... He's burnt out with Batman. He came back twice. And one of his movies got shelved. He's probably like, no, I'm done with Batman now. You guys botched that. I'm done. So let me know. Batman. Robert Pattinson. Batman. Let's do it. Let's get a Batman universe, man. I want to see a dark brooding Superman. Again. We did it with Snyder. That didn't go over well. So, but yes. If Henry doesn't come back, they should just scrap everything. If Ben doesn't come back, scrap everything. Build from the Batman. And Matt Reeves, dude, like, film the Batman back to back. Uh, two and three. Film those movies back to back. Get them out the way. Already shot so we can start introducing the Justice League. Let's get to it. Coming up next on Kitten Geek. We're getting... Some more Spider-Verse live action? Amazon Prime? Sony has partnered with Amazon Prime to produce their live action Sony Spider-Verse uh, TV series. We're getting a Silk series. Now, if you don't know who Silk is, I'm not really too familiar with Silk. It's like Spider-Woman, but a different version. So... With the Madam Web movie, let's get nerdy real quick. The Madam Web movie is supposed to introduce a lot of different Earths, a lot of different Spider-Men, right? You've seen Into the Spider-Verse. The only people that don't like this news are the are the MCU shills, are the MCU fanboys that don't want Spider-Man out of the MCU. Listen, Spider-Man has a plethora of other characters. That they don't need to exist. Like, I get it. I get it. You want Spider-Man in Venom. Obviously. But as far as his other characters, dude. And other other web-slingers, too. You're limiting your scope here. By having all these worlds, all these different Spider-Man interpretations, this is all multiverse stuff. This is all Marvel. It's all connected. You guys need to get over this... Well, did Kevin Feige produce it? You need to get over that. Because there's a lot of movies, a lot of the last movies that have been coming out, and a lot of the shows that have been coming out, that Kevin Feige has produced, they've been pretty mid. And a lot of people are starting to notice. It is what it is, man. So, yeah, and Amazon has some heat. They know how to produce some good shows. So when they're doing a Silk series about another web slinger, sign me up. The more web slingers, the better. We can get a bunch of different Spider-Man shows like going going simultaneously with Tom Holland Spider-Man. Oh, he's rumored to be in uh, King uh, Daredevil: Born Again. That would be sick, obviously. But you also have a, a bunch of other Spider-Man characters that Sony wants to make work. But you you guys are too busy clowning on Morbius, not giving Morbius a chance. Uh, you guys love. Venom. Most people love Venom. Venom 2. So I think they have a better track record, to be honest, about putting out quality content. Like, dude, look at Into the Spider-Verse. Marvel Studios didn't make that movie. They didn't make that movie. Spider-Man 2. They didn't... MCU has nothing to do with Spider-Man 2. And people say Spider-Man 2 is one of the best Spider-Man movies to ever exist. It's fine. Uh, it's top... Top five for me. My point, guys. Have an open mind, dude. Marvel is uh, Marvel Studios. Kevin Feige. He's already being spread too thin. You know, we got a bunch of Disney Plus shows. People are, are kind of meh on. I'd rather have, you know, an Amazon take a crack at it. Because if it's on Amazon, 
they're not constrained to this like PG-13 kitty kind of humor t- type of thing. It's the same shit. Even She-Hulk, She-Hulk at the end called out all the tropes that the MCU is known for. It's like they, they told you right there. Like, yeah, we do this, this, and this, and this. Well, people are tired of it. So, yeah, I'm ready for this Silk series on Amazon. Give me a Black Cat series on Amazon. Give me a... Um, well, they're, they're doing the Craven movie. Give me a, a Miles Morales series on Amazon. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then open up some portals and, and then cross over with the MCU if that's what you want to do. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing here? Because you guys obviously aren't satisfied with these Disney Plus shows for the MCU. Besides what? WandaVision? Uh, possibly Falcon and the Winter Soldier and, and Loki? The rest, everybody was was talking shit. They were, they were hating on it. The, the visual effects were lacking. The uh, cinematography has been lacking. The scripts were underwritten. And they're like movies stretched out into eight episodes, six episodes. It, it's... When are we going to get past this Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige situation where you guys have to... It's like... Fly away now. Leave the nest. It's okay. Other Spider-Man characters can be explored. Well, they're not the main characters. You gotta have Spider-Man in there, right? Because, no. These characters should be able to stand on their own. You don't You don't need Peter Parker in there to save everybody, to, to back them up, as, prop them up. Imagine if you got a Vulture movie with Michael Keaton. Just the Vulture. No Spider-Man. Oh, dude, people would eat it up. It's called Birdman. Not just playing. Anyways, what do you guys think about this Silk news? Uh, should I read the comic? I, I might. I might go on YouTube and watch watch some uh, comic book summaries of Silk as a character. I'm super excited for Madame Web, Craven. Listen, before Iron Man came out in 2008 and changed the game, right? The Avengers were were mid mid tier. It was all about the X Men and it was all about Spider Man. If you watch Spider-Man, the animated series, all those characters were dope. And it wasn't because just because Spider-Man was involved. It's because those interpretations of the characters were dope. If you write good characters, you don't need Spider-Man. It is, it is what it is. I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. Coming up next, Blumhouse. Blumhouse and James Wan's production company, what is it, Atomic Monster? They're going to be conjoining. They're going to be symbiotic. So, lots to unpack here. James Wan, he did the Saw franchise. He did uh, The Conjuring, right? Am I wrong about that? Harmada produced. Yeah, James Wan did The Conjuring. So... What do I think about them combining with Blumhouse? I thought this would mean less horror movies. Because if it's all under one production company now, that means less product. Just like when Fox got absorbed by Disney. We were supposed to get a bunch of X-Men projects. And now all we haven't seen anything from the X-Men in years at this point. I was fearful about that happening with Blumhouse and James Wan's company. However, they have said it's not going to decrease input. They're going to increase output. So if that's true, okay. That's good. Some people are indifferent on Blumhouse. Because Blumhouse has a lot of their direct-to-Hulu movies, and then they have their movies that come to theaters. Two very different types of Blumhouses. And you know what I'm talking about. I personally really dig the Hulu stuff. And then, when it comes to the movies, you know, this last Halloween franchise, very divisive. 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 Very mixed on whether it's not, I don't think it's Blumhouse's fault. I think it's the writers that they hired to tackle the Halloween franchise. Danny McBride wrote some of it. Apparently, I don't know how much of it he wrote. They obviously took some liberties. And you either like it or you don't, you know. I'm very mixed on it. I have my reviews. 
Um, but yeah, dude, I'm not, I mean, I don't like conglomerates really, I, I, as far as production companies go. If it's, if it's a streaming service combining, that's cool. But when it comes to production companies, that means you're combining two companies into one. You're probably going to have to fire uh, a lot of people like writing. Um, they're not going to combine all their staff. There's going to be layoffs because there's going to be a lot of redundancy. Oh, we're not going to have... If each company has like 15 writers, you're not going to have a 30 writer, a 30 person writer's room, right? You're going to take the best 15 and keep them. So it could be good or bad. I like James Wan's movies. I like most of Blumhouse movies. This could be very lucrative for both of them. I'm sh- I'm sure of it. James Gunn, or not James Gunn, James Wan is very smart. And I don't think he's going to merge with Blumhouse unless it's really, really worth it. What do you guys think? I don't have too much to say about this news. I just want to see what happens and what their first project is. Coming up next. the Christ- A Christmas Story Christmas is out on HBO Max. Are you guys a fan of A Christmas Story? I'm a huge fan. Every year, it was either a Christmas vacation and a Christmas story around Thanksgiving time, Christmas time. Those were always the go-to movies. That and Jingle All the Way. However, A Christmas Story it has this vibe. It was shot in like 81, 1981, and it was set in the 40s, right? 40s or 50s. And it had this vibe, this timeless Vibe. Well, not really timeless. It had this vibe that, yeah, it was like a timeless film. It was like a fairy tale kind of a thing, or it had this sparkle to it, this grit. So I watched this sequel, Ralphie's Back, and he's got his family, and he's an inspiring writer. And I'm going to spoil all this. If you haven't seen A Christmas Story Christmas, go watch it, or I'm just going to keep talking about it. So Ralphie comes home. Because the old man passes away. And I didn't know if they were going to do that on camera. Or they were just going to write him off. Saying he died a few years back. But no, he's like the center point of the movie. It's the reason why they go back to Ralphie's town. It's all about the old man. And it, it was pretty smart. Because they really embraced that relationship that the old man was trying to instill in Ralphie in the first movie like setting that example for what a good Christmas is for your family and the dynamic the family dynamic so all that was really smart uh, I, and I like this let me get down to this general points of the movie it was a good movie the script was pretty good best that they could probably do for something like this um, the cast most of the cast came back Uh, The actress that played Ralphie's mom is a new actress. I don't know if she passed away. The original, I don't know if she passed away or she's just not acting anymore. Uh, She almost took me out of it a few times. And then I kind of just had to shake my head and move past that. It did kind of stick out to me that they recasted the mom. uh, Because that dynamic was so apparent in the first movie. But as far as Ralphie goes and his buddies... It was like they never left. It was on site. Uh, the humor, they had some adult-ish humor in there. It wasn't just like a kid movie, you know. A lot of references to the old movie, the original. Some throwbacks. They really nailed like everything that they could possibly do. My only concern about it is it takes place in 1974. And this goes back to like what I was saying about the first one. The first movie had some grit to it. It was shot in 81, but they shot it on film. It looked not old, but there was a look to that movie where it's like, oh yeah, that probably does take place in the 40s or 50s or whenever that first movie took place. This film, it had that, They, the setting was the 70s and they had the sets decorated like the 70s and their clothes and cars, all that was the 70s. But it didn't feel like it was in the 70s. Does that make sense? 
I think they because they shot it on digital in like 4K. So I think if they would have, I'm not saying if they shot it on film, because that's pretty much impossible to do now. Not, not a lot of movies are shot on film. It's a lot more expensive. But if they had a more of a, the color grade was a bit different. It would have made it feel more real, like a 70s movie, uh, like Joker, for example. You can that movie felt dirty when you watched it. The aesthetic, the color grade, it, it was like it took place in the 80s, right? And it felt like it. And I, that just goes to the it just goes to the uh, the editors and the color graders and the people that do all that post production stuff and the director. So I don't know if they thought about the aesthetic of the movie as much as most of us will, or I might even be in the minority because the movie was well shot. I'm not, I'm not talking about the directing or anything. I'm just talking about the the color grade. Could have made it a little bit more grainy, a little some film grain on there a little bit, you know. That's just me though. It was really cool to see Ralphie come back after all this time. Uh, to see what his dynamic with his family is. Uh, his brother was barely in it. He had like he was in the beginning and then the end kind of. I don't know what his film schedule was like. Maybe he couldn't he couldn't uh, commit to that much. But we did get him in there, so it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I, I would I would give this film like an eight point five B plus. If you watch the original film, definitely check this out. It's worth your time. It's definitely worth your time. And every year when I watch a Christmas story, I'm gonna pop in the sequel because it's a great companion piece, guys. It's a great companion piece. All right, it has been episode twenty two. 22 episodes, man. We're doing this thing. We are doing this thing, guys. What do you guys think about all this news today? Surrounding Superman, Batman, this whole DC Universe drama. Apparently, James Gunn's writing the whole Bible out for the next 10 years. If I were him, I'd start fresh, dude. 10 years, fresh characters, new takes. That's what I would do. What do you think about this Amazon Prime Sonyverse Silk series. Are you mad? Let me know how mad you are in the comments. Blumhouse, James Wan, are you excited about this merge? This merger? I can go either way with it. Uh, as long as we get good movies. And finally, what'd you think about a Christmas story Christmas? Let me know in the comment section. It's been episode 22 of Getting Geeked with Danny Allen, your boy. Alright, go fuck yourselves.